Rob Shapiro from Technique Peak. Today we're going to take a look at the hip joint, really hip flexion with the hip joint, SI, low back, how they integrate with each other. So if I come this direction, bring down his knee towards his chest, let's say the hip stops there, but if I, I should be able to keep going, and if I keep going, I should be able to get to thigh to his abdomen, right? So I know I'm surpassing the hip range of motion, but functionally we have to be able to get that to that position. So as we go through, a lot of times what patients do, if they have tightness to the thoracolumbar junction, they're extended, the ribs are elevated. We have to kind of teach them and make sure we can get the ribs to come down into that position, put them in a more appropriate position for the abdominals to do their work. If we do that, we can have them come down to the ribs, see if we can pull down, and then we'll bring this back up. As we bring this down, you'll see they'll get better range. So we know with Donis, it's probably worth also working on the, the rib cage to be able to, for it to depress. And when does that happen? Okay, when you take, if he takes a deep breath in, we know the ribs will come up. But if he goes all the way out, he activates his abdominals all the way out further, further, further. He's getting motion through there, putting the thoracolumbar junction in its best resting position. And we can just teach him how to activate his muscles. By the time we're done, we get the mobility back into there. And then we wind up seeing, do we get more hip range of motion? Because we put that thoracic rib cage in its best resting position. All right, so next time you have a patient who can't get knee to chest, kind of rule out that it's more, not hip per se, and then starts thinking, I wonder if the lower rib cage has trouble depressing and work on that as well. And that should change some of your functional movement patterns. Rob Shapiro from Technique Peak.